Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about this really cool American Ultra Jazz Bass. I don't cover bass guitars too often on my channel, but this one was too cool not to talk about. So similar to all the other Ultras that I've previously talked about, these things replace the old American Elite lineup. Basically, the biggest differences lie within the necks of these guitars if you're trying to decide should you upgrade or not. First off, your fretboard radius is now 10 inches to 14 inches, which is a little bit flatter right here as it used to be 9.5 to 14. So not a huge change by any means, but they also changed the neck profile. So these now have the modern D shape all the way up and down the neck. That used to be a modern C to a modern D, so these will feel slightly thinner in comparison. Cosmetically, they've decided to give these a vintage looking appointment to them by making them a tinted maple neck instead of just having that kind of white color. But you'll notice, different from the other Ultras, these don't have skunk stripes or anything, and they have truss rod adjustment at the bottom still. And this is one of the biggest differences where I think I like the old Elite setup better because they had that truss rod wheel. I mean, if you're gonna be adjusting it at the bottom, you might as well have that cool little wheel. But on these, you have this little cutout on this pick guard instead of on the fretboard. So for me anyways, I kind of like the look of the old one, and a lot of people like the way that those wheels functioned. But the biggest feature for the Ultra series is this whole sculpted neck heel. Now on the bases, it's really hard to see it. It's not quite as pronounced, but if you get it in the light just right, you can see it right there. But I'll be honest with you, outside of the camera, I cannot see any difference until I look at it flat. Here you can kind of see how it slopes down. That's just designed to make it a little bit more comfortable up here because they've already gotten rid of this little part right here. That's just the next step to make this the latest greatest thing. And notice, hey, five bolt-on neck, that's kind of cool. They've also introduced the next generation of Fender noiseless pickups, so that's a slight upgrade, and it appears that they've refined these active controls. What makes these basses interesting is you can run them as passive on this little switch, but you can also run them as an 18 volt active circuit. You put your batteries in right here. It appears that they've modified what these things do. On this bass, the controls you have for the mid, bass, and treble boosts and cut are a plus or minus 10 dB. The old ones, you could add 10 decibels or cut 15 decibels from the mids. The bass had 12 dBs to be added or cut, and the treble was the same, plus minus 10. So it seems like, kind of like the Stratocaster here, they've simplified it to just have nice round even numbers for everything, plus or minus 10. And these new features are now going to cost you $200 more than the old front if you're comparing prices today. So these things are running $1,999 through $2099. It depends if you want the alder or ash body and the finish that comes with them. So the four string jazz bass, you actually only have five options here. That's not as many as the guitars. The alder bodies come in an Arctic Pearl finish, Cobra Blue, Texas T, and Ultra Burst. And if you prefer the $100 upcharge ash body, you only have one option on this one, and it's aged natural with a rosewood fretboard. Now you might be wondering, huh, where did all of our options go? If the guitars get all of these cool finish options, why did the basses get left out? That's because they actually did a five string version of the jazz bass for this one, just like they did in the old Elite series but they basically offered the opposite there. So this one, you can find the Arctic Pearl with a maple fretboard instead of rosewood. The Ultra Burst still has rosewood though. And this is where you can get the new Mocha Burst finish. So if you like Texas T, you gotta go four string. If you prefer Mocha Burst, you gotta go for the five string. That's how they get you on the two cool new finishes. And similar story on the Ash Body five strings. They have the Age Natural, but this time with the maple fretboard, and they also offer you the Plasma Red Burst color. So those are your options with the jazz bass. You can also choose a P bass, but we'll save that for a different video. Though I'll be honest, I really don't have any plans of reviewing one of those. So what are my first impressions of this guitar? Keep in mind, I mean, this is not an in-depth professional review. I don't play bass. I don't know a lot about them. All I knew is that this thing is ridiculous ridiculously beautiful. You can check out that Y Run episode when I first checked out all these models and I fell in love with this thing. It's because all these colors just work together so beautifully. So we've got this beautiful ambered over neck and that matches so well with the black binding on the sides. You also have the black pearl away, but this all just comes into play with these nice dark pickups. The Texas T finish, which is kind of like a goldish oil color. It's really cool in person.
person. Pair that with the anodized gold pickguard and everything about this base is just cool. This has to be the coolest base Fender's ever made, as far as I'm aware of. So yeah, I bought this completely based on its looks and I am not disappointed. But being kind of a novice bass player, what I really like is that they have this little control layout card right over top of it. You don't have to look at a sheet and go, huh, what's this doing? It's just right there, all laid out for you. And if you decide you don't need that, you can just easily take that off because that's just a small overlay. But they've got that ultra satin finish on the neck as well as the fretboard, so it's nice and smooth to play. You don't have to worry about sticky finishes or anything like that, even if you're kind of a sweaty guy. I found the action to be a little bit high in the upper registers, but I'm not really a bass guy. Maybe that's just as good as a bass gets. <laughs> but let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take an in-depth look at all of its specs and parts. Inside the American Ultra Jazz Bass, I had a few surprises here. So I initially tried to take this off before I took the pick guard off and I was surprised when I couldn't. It's because the active circuitry actually extends underneath the pick guard. I thought that was kind of interesting. They used up every single last square inch of space that they could. But underneath your pick guard, you can see right there where they kind of sculpt the body away so you can access the truss rod without actually taking that off. You can see there's a little bit of white polishing compound there. If you get in there with a cloth, you can definitely clean that up because it was all over there. Not quite easy to get all of it, but I got most of it out. But this adjusts with an Allen wrench. And then the pickups have a blue base plate that reads Ultra J Base. I'm curious if the other early Ultras are kind of like my Stratocaster and use the Gen 4 base plates or not. But this is what you should find in here. And those guys are just mounted with four screws right there on top of that little foam block. And the pickup covers are not actually soldered on or anything, so make sure you don't cut those wirings or anything. But that's what it looks like with the cover off. They make them noiseless by stacking them on top of each other. So it's kind of like a humbucker, but it's just stacked up instead of stacked on the side. And the same thing is true on the bridge pickup too. The bridge is secured to the body by five screws, and they call this the high mass bridge. On the top there, it reads fender, and on the back, it just reads brass. And just in case if you're curious what this is right here, that's just the grounding part that secures to the bottom of the bridge to make sure that's grounded off. You can see that bridge does leave a light impression on the top of the guitar, but I mean, it's, it's always gonna be there, so it's not really a big deal or anything. But inside the control route, you do see one barcode right there. And it's kind of interesting what this whole circuit is. So these pickups are actually wired in on a quick connect system on a PCB. You can see right there it's labeled bridge and neck. So if they come out with the latest and greatest thing, it would probably be pretty easy just to upgrade. Same thing right there with the output jack and the battery. So, you know, that's kind of convenient. But at the same time, it's something that I find really funny. Bassists, they apparently love this stuff. Or at least they're more open to the idea than guitar players because heaven forbid you put a PCB on a guitar, people will freak out. They don't want all these active shaping controls and things like that. And on the back side right there, it reads Ultra. This thing will come off, it's not permanently on there. I'll take it off after this. But this is your volume control from max all the way to off. Then your next one is your pan control. So this is your neck. And then it kind of stops in place when you're in the middle position so it's easy to get there. And then you can also pan it to the bridge. So you can get whatever combination of these pickups you want. It's not really a pickup selector. And then this little mini toggle switch kind of controls these. So this switches the bass to passive mode where these things won't do too much for you except for the tone knob. But if you switch it to active, you can choose between a treble and bass cut on this knob. This top one is for the treble, so that'd be plus 10 dB. Then it clicks into place when it would be at zero, and then you can also cut it. And the exact same thing is true with the bass. Also clicks into place right there. Then the top part of this knob is the mid-range control. Same thing as the other ones, plus 10 dB or minus 10. But this is just your tone control for everything. It does not click into a middle place because you're gonna want it mainly on 10 or slightly rolled back, whatever you're trying to do here. So I'll put this in the case just in case you wanna put it back on, but that's what it looks like all nice, shiny, and clean. And to wrap up the body, here's what the pick guard looks like. It's anodized aluminum in a gold color. Moving on to the neck here, it is bound and you have these black block inlays. They're not mother of pearl, but you know, they're kind of a pearloid material. But I love that these kind of match the finish of the guitar because it's dark at certain angles and then it turns golden. But these things do the exact same thing. They're dark and kind of lighter in other areas. So that is just a beautiful combination here. 
but this is a 21 fret base and they use the medium jumbo frets. I've got similar complaints on these as like all the other maple fret boarded instruments. You can kind of see where they got the lacquer around the sides of the frets. But quality control wise, do you see right there on the frets? It just looks a little bit uneven. It's like the binding went over them a little bit when it should be exposed. So that's a very small minor cosmetic imperfection that I saw on this. But other than that, I mean, that's about the only thing I could nitpick about this bass, I think. As far as neck specs go, I get 1.49 inches at the nut. And it gets really beefy, 2.19 at the 12th. So it starts super skinny and then it gets super wide. First fret neck depth, 0.85. And then it moves up to 0.88. So a very consistent feel. The nut is made of bone, and this is just something, you know, I'm brand new to fenders. I don't like the way binding ends on these necks. I think it would be so much cooler if they would have done what they do at the bottom of the neck. So down here, they just kind of run it along the edge of it. I think it would be nicer instead of just running it off the edge right here if they just capped it off just like they did at the bottom there and make it just black right behind the nut. I think that would look a little bit more complete, but yeah, good luck changing tradition, right? <laughs> Now moving on to the headstock here, this is kind of interesting. So you've got your string tree like thing for the top two strings. And then this guy right here, the A string has something that kind of helps guide it. I've never seen that before. So maybe somebody can fill me in in the comments section what exactly that's for or what issue that cures. But I'm sure it has something to do with tuning stability and getting the angles right. But from the factory, you do get these little plastic things on here. I'll go ahead and take these off once I'm done messing with it though, so I can get some nice B-roll stuff. But this is the first one of the Ultra series where you can really tell that that logo is gold and it works really well with this. It reads Fender Jazz Bass. And here's one more minor slip up I found. You see that screw right there? It's not actually drilled where it should be. You can see when I take it off how it doesn't line up. So they had to drill straight through the pick guard on that little curve right there. That's not the first time I've seen that from Fender. So maybe that's why they do them like that, just in case they need to. But before we move on to the back here, let's just take a minute to appreciate the finish here on the top while we have that bridge off. So you can see it in its full glory. I love this Texas tea color and I think on this base, it really does pop quite well. Moving on to the back side of the base here. Again, you can see the beautiful Texas tea color, but the only route you have back here is for the double nine volt battery system here. You can see it's just a square chunk taken out of the guitar and you can see the alder body wood in there. But those open up just by this little spring latch system. It's not too hard to do. You can swap those out without actually taking those screws out. And then you also have the side output jack. And these come stock with Schaller strap lock buttons. The counterparts are always inside the case. But here you can see your traditional little belly cut right there. And then here's that new little contour carve that they're doing. It's really hard to see, as I was telling you earlier, even with that neck plate off. But they essentially just kind of slightly sloped this. The straight edge kind of helps you see the slope. But here's what the neck plate looks like. It just reads Fender American Ultra. And the back, there's nothing too special going on here. And the neck cavity itself, it looks like there's a date stamp that reads October 2019 at the top. And then you have that number. It looks like 77, 15, 4 and something. And it looks like it might say Riga, RG. So that's probably the name of an employee here. Now the back of the neck has an ID sticker that reads American Ultra Jazz Bass 4. And there's a few other slight markings on here. But the most important one is right here, the date stamp, September 17th, 2019. Something I particularly like about this one is the neck. There's so much wood grain on this example. Lots of the circles, lots of the lines, just everything. I mean, next to having flame or some bird's eye in here, this is definitely the next best thing. And then your serial number up here is just on a decal, reads US 19081211, Corona, California plant. After a little bit of a neck adjustment and a light setup, I mean, I'm by no means a professional, I was able to get that action much lowered by the 12th fret, so I'm a lot happier with it now. But this one weighs nine pounds, 2.4 ounces, once it's all back together. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. Let's go ahead and run through these tones of this bass. It's both an active and a passive bass, so I'm just gonna run through each of the different pickups in passive mode first and play with the tone controls. So starting with the neck pickup with the tone all the way on.
position, so both pickups on. And now we've got the bridge pickup. So those are the three main positions. It's a pan switch, so you can get the in-between sounds. So like 75% bridge, 25% neck. So I'll just kind of do some strumming here to show you that potential. Now, once you go into active mode, what so we've got going on, the volume's still the same, your pan switch is still the same, but now we've got these guys right here. This is a treble and bass cut and boost. So if you see this knob all the way up here, that's the treble being boosted by 10, then this one would be the bass boosted by 10. Then this knob is your mid-range boost or cut when it's on the top, and then the bottom is still your tone. I'm just gonna leave the tone full on at 10, not really gonna experiment too much with that, but I will show you the capabilities of these three. So here's the neck, everything at zero. Now we'll boost the treble up to 10. Take the treble out by 10. So now we'll move our treble back to zero and boost the bass to 10. Now here's what it's like if you cut the bass out and just have regular treble. And just for fun, bass boosted and treble cut all the way. Same on this one with all the positions. Now we'll move on to the bridge position. I've got the treble and bass just at their normal, but now we'll start playing with that mid range. So here's what that mid range cut down.
as you can tell, there's a bunch of different sounds within this bass. I mean, I'm not necessarily a fantastic bass player, so I can't really just go through and tell you what the strengths and weaknesses of each of them are. This is one of the first active basses that I've actually got to toy around with, but I'm kind of impressed with these tone shaping controls. My final thoughts on this beautiful American Ultra Jazz bass. As a non-bass guitar player, you know, traditionally anyways, I had a lot of fun with this thing. It's beautiful, and I think that's its number one selling point here as to why you would want to upgrade from your old Elite or anything else that you're using. When they say these basses can do it all, I kind of believe them because you have both the passive and active controls, so you really can dial in almost any bass sound that you'd want. And as far as quality control goes, I only found those two very small things. Once again, that's kind of the edges of the frets. It's just a small cosmetic thing. And same thing with that slightly off-center screw right there. I would say that's definitely a passing mark. So if you're curious about these things, I would definitely suggest checking one out because I had a good time. And if you are interested in this one that I used for my review and demo, it is now up for sale or trade. You can find the link in the description to the reverb page, or you can email me at tradetrogly at gmail.com. Now remember, I'm not a bass guy. I don't want to trade this for other bass guitars unless it's like a really cool limited edition bass or something. I'm mainly after limited edition Fender guitars. But let's go ahead and review the condition here just real quick. I mean, this thing is in brand new shape. I've just taken off all the protective coverings over it. So you've got exposed tuners, oh. <laughs> but notice that the face of the headstock here does have the full gloss finish, whereas everything else is more that satin feel. I don't believe I dinged this up against the ceiling or anything, but you might find a few stray marks here or there. Fretboard's in good shape here, no fret wear, but again, you can see the light lacquer that's still over the edges of them from the factory. And the face of the guitar here. You're gonna find some light fingerprint marks and maybe some light picking scratches, but I mean, this thing is still in very respectable shape. Something I kind of wish Fender would have done differently is maybe actually make this control plate out of the anodized pickguard stuff. Maybe there's a reason that they don't do that. Maybe it just comes down to tradition as to what the regular pick guards are made out of, but I think that would have looked cool as well. So flipping over to the backside here, I used my super soft pants as an effort to not scratch this up at all, but you do have a few small fingerprint marks, some dust, things like that. Nothing too crazy. I didn't bash the edges of the instrument up against anything either, so you're looking pretty good here. And the back of the neck, no impressions that I saw. So just get this professionally set up to your own tastes and you will be good to go. But most people would probably be happy with it out of the box. But let's check it out under black light just for fun. Kind of similar to all the other ones we saw. The Texas T finish and it being poly doesn't glow too much here. But the necks do because it's the satin finish. Apparently those things will glow. So this is mainly just a, a fun little visual show for you guys rather than looking for anything. If you order one of these brand new, this is the case you get. What's kind of interesting of how these differ from the guitar cases is you actually get an additional latch. So these are those nice TSA latches that just open up by pushing this little button right here. But you get this additional fourth one and one of them does lock. So that's nice and secure there. You got a nice and secure handle. And the interior is the same as the guitar cases, just that gray interior. Nothing, you know, too fancy or special, but it does hold the instrument well. 
And another nice feature here is look at this huge compartment. I mean, you could fit whatever you could possibly ever need in here. But you've got a couple of silica packets, the case pass certificate, as well as the case keys. And then inside of here sleeps a bunch more goodies. Which in this case is this. So you get the compartment to put all this stuff in. You get that little sticker that they normally put on the pick guard, but they don't because it's the anodized version. You get a fender sticker. You get a little tag for this guitar. You also get a little owner's manual as well as the certificate of authenticity. Fender lessons tag. You get the Schaller counterparts. Not quite sure what this Allen wrench is for because it doesn't really line up to anything, but this one's for adjusting your action. And then I saved all those little plastic things that were on the tops of the tuners. You got the thing that tells you about the controls. And then these little guys were on top of the pickups. The only thing missing is the truss rod adjustment tool. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this ultra jazz bass, you can check out that link in the description, which will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.